Hey guys, so hopefully you've already watched the video. I guess, well, no, it's actually premiering now. Hey, uh, Zeno Kate. Have you watched the video yet? I'll give everyone a few minutes before I actually start. You should go watch it. And then uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask. Yeah, the, yeah, Huckabees, the, the video is live now. It just premiered. So if you want to go watch it and then come back and then we can discuss. I'll just be chilling here. Oh, is it not live on your end? For those of you that just joined, um, I recommend going and watching the video first and then we can chat whenever you guys are ready. Uh, what's your countdown on your end? Hey, hey everyone that just joined. I'm letting people uh, watch the music video first and then we can uh, we can chat about it, we can ask questions and I'll kind of tell you guys about um, the whole process and um, pretty much everything that led up to now. Part of me is like, I should have done the the live chat maybe an hour after the video because <laughs> now I'm just making people wait, but it's okay.
Oh, the growling. <laughs> it's so crazy to me that um, I've gotten to this point where we're including the growling in the music because when we started Daedric, I assumed it was going to be a pop project where I was just going to be singing, no grit singing, no growling, no scream, none of that. And then here we are where we're doing growls and more growls every song. I swear it's just becoming like almost like metalcore, which I'm, I'm not mad about, but um, it's just funny because it's ironic that I had this whole idea about Daedric and what it was going to sound like and it was going to be more synth pop. Um, but I'm, I don't know, I, I love doing screams, I love grit singing. And so, um, I don't know, it's a lot of fun to do and it's cool because it's something that I never imagined for myself as a vocalist, but um, as I've pushed myself to learn how to do all these things and keep practicing and getting better and learning from, you know, people that are farther along on their journey, it's really inspiring me. But um, yeah, you have to let me know when you guys are done with the video because I want to talk about a little bit about that process because it, it took us um, a while to get here with Dawnbreaker. Um, I'm glad you like it. Uh, Dawnbreaker is interesting because uh, we didn't really plan for it to be a trilogy, but it, it just sort of fell into place and it made a lot of sense to to create Dawnbreaker um, based on the storylines from uh, Wretched and then Sepulchre with those, um, those storylines. So basically with Wretched, um, that song was about her scene, the Daedric Prince her scene and how um, her subjects, you know, become werewolves and then they kind of like go into the fray and they um, you know that they blood, they do the bloodlust and all that and I thought that was really cool and then Sepulcher was about um, Hermaeus uh, Mora and that whole DLC and um, I don't know if you have played Skyrim at all but um, it's just a really cool place where the whole world is basically like this giant um, realm of knowledge like there's all these books and there's like goo everywhere and I just thought that was like a cool aesthetic so Sepulchre was about that and and, um, and dealing with you know all the hate and the chaos the rage all those things and trying to fight against that um, as as you know a playable character and so when we got to Dawnbreaker it made a lot of sense to bring those two uh, characters into like a real world setting so with Dawnbreaker we came up with a storyline um, to where um, the main character of Daedric, which is obviously me, encounters these characters in kind of like a setting, like a, almost like a castle. So we went and shot that. And it was tricky because obviously like I'm playing all the characters in the same video. So there were some scenes where we had to, to do some movie magic. Um, but it was a lot of fun and it, you know, it took a lot of work to get there, but um, I think it did, you know, it turned out really nicely. And I feel like it really ties up the trilogy here um, with Dawnbreaker and and that um, the the three Daedric princes that I chose, because I mean, if, if you haven't noticed already, Dawnbreaker is about the Daedric prince Meridia, and you know she's pretty much the only. It was interesting to include that. Um, you know, with the song, uh, we kind of evolved from Wretched from being uh, pretty straightforward, just you know, belting and uh, clean singing, and and pretty um, heavy on the synth to Sepulchre, where it, it kind of became more rock. And then now with Dawnbreaker, like to me, there's some elements of metalcore in there. I mean, there's still a lot of synth and a lot of like rock stuff in there, but with the screams and everything, with the heavy breakdown, um, it's kind of bringing it to this new place. <laughs> no, I haven't heard from Todd Howard yet. And I hope I never do. <laughs> um, you know who played those riffs, Clay. Um, Yeah, you know, actually, Elden Ring is a game that I've been wanting to play, uh, but I'm afraid to play it because uh, when I when I started Skyrim, I would get sucked in for days and I wouldn't shower or eat or whatever. I just play this game and be obsessed with it. So I feel like Elden Ring is like even more intense than that, and I'm actually scared of 
getting lost and not being productive. So I don't know, maybe, maybe one day I'll, I'll start it. But I, I, I do think it's like really, really sick. But anyways, um, back to Dawnbreaker. Um, it was, a, it was a cool process because I feel like it, the song itself came together pretty fast. Um, and then we went through this whole process of, um, you know, taking it to Brian Skeel of Void Chapter to mix it and put his own flavors on there. And I thought that was, that was just a really interesting thing to do because previously we'd all like kept it within, um, within Daedric's team and stuff. Uh, but I think, you know, it sounds really cool and I'm excited for like the next stuff and see what we're going to do with it and how we handle that. Um, but I'm trying to think what else I was going to say. <laughs> Explain why we did the trilogy. Um, well, I kind of, I sort of did already, but I'll just say it again, I guess. Um, the, trilogy, the trilogy just, it made sense to bring all the characters from the previous videos into the into this like real world place and um, make them all interact because it would be really cool and it was obviously challenging to have me interact with myself in a, in a video but with some movie magic we made it work. <laughs> Thanks Huckabees. Um, how do we lock down those locations? So it took forever to find the castle location but there was this guy in austin who i don't know if he built it or he just bought this place is it was this eclectic like mansion setting where the outside is a it was like a normal home just like a you know a two-story house but then you go to around to the back of his house and it was like this whole medieval landscape he had like a garden he had this cottage thing with uh, dragons and swords everywhere and all the you know all the stone work and everything and so we filmed most of the video there we spent 12 hours filming from it was from like 2 to midnight or maybe it was a little later I forgot how long we were there but we were there forever filming and it was freezing and I was wearing you know the the costume so it was, <laughs> was kind of tricky but um, I had a lot of great help um, to film that and we got through everything except for the scene with the character from Sepulchre. That one we actually came back to DFW and we filmed that um, in a studio because we wanted an all black room to kind of simulate the darkness. So um, we did it, it was basically a two day shoot and um, I, we were a little worried about how we were gonna film me as Daedric and then me as Sepulchre because Sepulchre is obviously covered in black paint and I was like, there's no way I can wash this off and and do this so it worked out that we filmed it the last day um, so that it was um, pretty uh, efficient I should say uh, in terms of an album we're working towards that I thought um, originally I thought oh maybe we'll just drop a couple singles and then do the album um, but I think it makes more sense to kind of give focus to each single leading up to the album and then you know do kind of like in like almost like a compilation, I guess, of, of all the singles as an album, because um, it'll allow us to really hone in on the mood for each song and um, give them that, you know, that special attention that I think that they deserve. Um, the, the one we're working on now, I feel like it's super different. Um, but I think the album is, is going to be one thing that I, I don't want to put a hard deadline on it anymore. I just want to kind of feel it out and, you know, as we release it, I think things will just kind of make sense on, on when to actually release the album. Um, we, I'm actually also working on a couple of really, really cool features that are outside of Daedric's um, universe. But I think, you know, you guys are really going to enjoy it because, I mean, I do, so... <laughs> I think, I think they're really cool. Uh, I can't wait to, to show those too. Um, but, what's I, I wish the, the messages would just stay on here. But did you guys have any other questions about the video or the song? Oh, about the costumes? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm assuming you said costumes. Um, 
Oh yeah. Okay, so the costumes, the original Daedric costume from Wretched, um, I was actually inspired by The Witcher. I really love the costume they did for Henry Cavill, and I like, you know, the black and silver aesthetic. So. I went on Etsy and I uh, found this Russian artist who does these like shoulder um, armor pieces that were, you know, it was like almost like chain, um, chain mail and then it had the shoulder thing and then I thought, you know, let's get some cool leather look going on underneath. So then we got the bodysuit, which was a leather bodysuit and with that I felt like it felt really cool and it's still modern in a way, um, but it, it did have the medieval um, vibes going on and then so that was like Wretched's costume, and of course I got a sword and everything, and then the metal fingers. I just thought, you know, those are really sick. I think I actually stumbled across those when I was ordering the armor. And then um, for Sepulchre, I, I was like, I didn't want to showcase any kind of like costumes besides this this black goo thing. I wanted it to feel like super visceral and, and gross and um, just like feel like this thing wasn't human almost. Um, and so like the costume for Sepulchre was literally black paint and when I did the photo shoot I didn't dilute it because I wasn't very smart and it took me two days to get that paint off uh, in the shower uh, but then the next time I, I shot it for um, the video and then for this current video I mixed it with oil so that I could easily you know wash it out of my hair because that's where it gets stuck is in your hair um, and then the the costumes in uh, Dawnbreaker were obviously a combination of um, Wretched's original costume and then we added some more to it to kind of develop the character um, and then I, I wanted to wear a wig because I had pink hair and I was like I don't know if I want to have pink hair in this video so I got a silver wig then and then um, we added the pants and then for Meridia I wanted to show her as this kind of um, benevolent goddess like almost like an angel kind of vibe so we got this all white dress all white wig um, and and then I, like I have like a gold chain on. Oh, and then um, Hercene's character shows up in Dawnbreaker as well. And we you know we have the the uh, original horns and then the dress and the sword. Um. So there's you know obviously a lot of costume changes, but I wanted Hercene to feel like this almost woodland creature, like almost like a mix between uh, a satyr and an elf. But yeah, it was. Um, it was a lot of fun to run back and forth between these costume changes. Um, any ideas or scenes that didn't make it into the video? Ooh, um, you know, I was gonna do a lot more um, split screens with, with me in it, and then it was just taking so long to film all these things because we had to do so much setup with the lighting. We, we rented like full production gear with, you know, um, we had like a monitor, we had like, um, some sky panels things like that to like make it feel more cinematic because I'm really really into film and I wanted it to look professional um, <clears throat> and then um, I what I was say. oh the sword um, I got the sword um, at a costume shop in Plano and um, it was actually a last-minute addition to to the first wretched video because my uh, my videographer, my director at, in that shoot, she was like, it would be really cool if you had a sword, you know, swing around while you're singing. And I was like, you know what, that's that's really awesome. So then that sword became like the Daedric sword. And um, and now we've been using it, you know, across the board for so many things. And then for Dawnbreaker, we introduced the Dawnbreaker sword, of course. And that was, we got it from the same shop. Um, and then we, oh, no, actually, you know, I didn't get it from the same shop. We, we ordered one from, the same, from that same shop. I wasn't feeling it so then we ordered another one off Amazon is actually the Kingslayer sword from Game of Thrones um, and then we added you know in post we added some VFX to make it look more like Dawnbreaker and so that that took a little bit of finessing but I think you know it, it has like the same vibe without being like an absolute ripoff Yamamosa man <laughs> oh gosh um Yeah, you know, being on Fix is a cool thing because I, I've never been on the label before. Uh, but you know, they're they're super supportive, and um, they've really just like bought into the, our whole realm of, of Daedric. I know it, it seems a little bit wacky sometimes to talk about 
medieval stuff in in the modern world where a, a lot of the artists on on fix are actually more of like the futuristic style like the synth and it all caters to like a lot of like techie stuff and I thought that was really cool and I was like well how can we how can we fit in here um, because you know I'm super into Skyrim which is a game but it's also very medieval based um, and so I'm actually um, planning on hybridizing uh, the Daedric vibe as we go forward because I thought it would be really really sick to to bring in some of those elements that you see on fakes on the other artists and kind of make it my in my own flavor um, because I really enjoy the vibes that, and the sex that they have going on but obviously I, you know I want to still be unique to me and to um, to Daedric and make it work for us uh, was I in a previous oh wait are there any plans to go live in the future um, probably yeah probably some more honestly uh, I'm not really much of a talker but uh, I do like, you know, talking to you guys and seeing what you what you think about all the content that we're putting out, all the videos and the songs, because, you know, a lot of people have reached out and said how much they, they've enjoyed it and how they were surprised, you know, to find us. Um, but, I, you know, it's, it's really encouraging to me to, to hear that kind of feedback. So I'll, I'll work on going live more. Um, was I in a previous band before Daedric? I'm still fairly new to your work. Um, yes, I'm actually still in that previous band. Um, we're called Aesop. We're metalcore out of DFW. It's a totally different sound. Um, you know, uh, pretty heavy stuff, um, but it definitely influenced my path to Daedric. It, uh, working in Aesop, um, you know, really brought me to where I am now, and it, it, it gave me, you know, the confidence and the talents to, to do the stuff I'm doing now with Daedric. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, this comment about fantasy and, and mixing, uh, you know, the future success. Yeah, I, I, I kept wondering, like, how to make it work. And I think now that I feel solidified in the, the medieval vibes, I feel like it's going to be a really easy transition to include more of the hybrid tech stuff, the future stuff, and make it work in a way that feels uh, natural and, and true to who, to who uh, Daedric is. Where am I? I am on a beach. <laughs> I never go to the beach, but I'm here right now. And I do not have poolside service, but I have this mimosa that I'm afraid to drink. Uh, what's next for Daedric? Um, well, I'm obviously, you know, we're we're gonna keep working on our songs and and keep pushing for, um, you know, what's new for us and work on just developing our sound to to be better than the last one each time because that's something that I, I've always been interested in is you know basically one-upping ourselves because uh, you want to be you know proud of, of the thing and never never plateau because I feel like if, if I plateau then it's like okay why am I just writing the same song over and over like I feel like I need to push myself constantly because um, I want to beat my old self, my past self, and just be better every time, whether it's, you know, uh, better at screaming, better, better melodies, whatever it takes um, to, to just, you know, be excited about what's next. Will there be aliens in Daedric's future work? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say no, because I feel like if I ever work in absolutes, then it turns around and bites me in the ass, because... I'll end up one day being like, oh damn, there's gonna be aliens in this video, and I lied to someone and told them there would never be aliens. Because I've done that before, I've been like, oh, I'll never do this, I would never um, say that or um, work on stuff that has that in that, and then here I am, you know, doing things that I said I would never do. Like, I told myself, oh, I'll never scream because I'll hurt my voice and I don't wanna ruin my singing voice, blah, 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 blah. and then here I am, and I love screaming so much, I love it equally as much as singing um, I get excited to do it because it's really sick and it's fun and I'm like I just want to see I want to get I want to get better because I, I looked up to people like Chester Bennington and uh, Marcus Ridge of North Lane and I'm just like I want to be like that I want to be as good as them. Um, if you were to feature anybody in your project who would you collaborate with oh anyone okay well anyone would I mean I want to be uh, featured on North Lane or have them featured on, on us but um, Man, that's hard. If, I guess if I was to pick on the fixed roster, um, 
there's a, there's a few names some that come to mind like you know fight the fade the annex essinger void chapter those guys i feel like they're just at the top of their game they're they're doing stuff that i'm just like i'm blown away and they're you know they're all super talented people and you know they've been they've been working on their craft for way longer than i have i've only been truly active in in the music world for like maybe five years and so you know i look up to them and i, I see what they're doing and how they have their processes nailed down and they know their sound and everything and it would just be awesome to, to work with them um outside of the fixed roster I don't know. I mean, I, I like to mix it up. I would love to work with people in all kinds of genres and just see what they can bring to the table and see how those sounds can mix and and how it could, you know, change um, what we're doing and make it unique. Uh, Aesop, you spell it A-E-S-O-P. Um, we're on Spotify and stuff, and um, it's spelled like Aesop's Fables, basically. Um, but anyways, yeah, um, back to you know, collaborating. I, I just like, I like to keep an open mind because I've learned that if I try to pigeonhole the sound, then that's when I'll become stagnant. And it's hard to progress whenever you feel like you have to be a certain thing, do a certain thing, sound a certain way. You limit yourself. And if you, if you put those ceilings on yourself, then you're literally telling yourself no. And I just feel like you should never do that in any sense, like, you know, creatively or um, in your own talents, your own strengths, like you should always be open-minded and be willing to, to try new things. Uh, fave games next to Skyrim. Uh, okay, absolutely. A Zelda Breath of the Wild. That was a beautiful game. I've played it more than once already. And every time, you know, it, I feel that same nostalgic feeling of, you know, a mix of the old Zelda games from original Game Boy to now here with this art that they've created, it's beautiful and everything about it is just, it's a masterpiece. I've also played um, Pokemon. I, I played uh, Shield or no, was it Sword? Sword or Shield, I forgot which one. And it was all right, um, but I, I love playing Pokemon. So then I got Arceus and I'm still playing that one, but I haven't had time recently. But I do love that they have the Pokemon just um, chilling out in the open because you know how you used to have to search in the grass or um, go find them. It's cool to actually run into them and then, you know, having the, the mega versions where they're like level 50 and you're only, you're not ready for that. Uh, I like getting owned and then pretending like it didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> uh, new merch dropping with this release. Yes, actually, I uh, need to post about this, but we have two new shirts that are going to be available um, with, the, with the release of Dawnbreaker. Um, <clears throat> it's available on the fixed store, the merch store. You can just go to you know, fixstore.com slash daedric. Um, we have an anime inspired shirt that I designed. Um, it's based on the Hercene character, but then I wanted to include some anime elements because I'm a huge anime fan. I love the styles. I love the way that they draw them. And I love, you know, my one of my favorite um, animes is actually Attack on Titan. So I thought that'd be really cool to kind of include that aesthetic there too and then we have another shirt designed by um uh tony um streeter he's uh, he's new to fix and he uh, does amazing work and this one actually reminds me of the new batman um that logo that they they used for the the movie it's a really cool design it's you know it's red and gray and black and it's kind of grungy it's a little different for for us but i thought that it would be a cool um a cool aesthetic to use for our merch for people that are looking for that style. Um, let's see. Uh, have you listened to Northland's new album? Man, I uh, that is on my list. Um, I want to listen to it when I have a good set of headphones or monitors to listen to. Because right now I just have these little uh, uh, Bluetooth buds, but I feel like the sound just doesn't do it justice. So I want to wait until I can give it the the sound that it deserves because I'm a huge fan of North Lane. I just think this guy's, you know, they push themselves and everything they do is just fantastic. Uh, let's see, would you play Assassin's Creed and see Daedric in that universe? Um, I played Assassin's Creed, uh, the one, what was it? I can't remember which one it was, but it was, it was in Italy. Um, it was in, I want to say Rome. That was the setting for that one. Um, and I can see it. I'm, I love I love hoods. I love you know the the eagle dives off of stuff. I mean, not that I would do the eagle dive in real life uh, and survive because I'd just do it once and that that'd be the only time I did it. But um, 
I like Assassin's Creed. I like everything they have going on. I like how, you know, you start off in this futuristic real world thing and then you go into the game and you have to play like your past ancestors and stuff. And I think that concept is really cool because it, it definitely successfully integrates like the past and the present in a way that like is uh, like the concept flows really nicely. So I don't know. I'm, it could it could work. Who knows? But I'm definitely more of a, a Skyrim nerd and kind of a Skyrim junkie. So I'm obsessed with the lore. I always research whenever I'm writing the songs and I pick my my subject. I kind of like to look at all the games across the board from the Elder Scrolls, from Morrowind to you know like Oblivion, like all that, and see like how those characters existed in those games too. Um, any requests for fan art? Ooh, um, fan art. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm open. Uh, I think it'd be cool to see all the characters from Dawnbreaker together in something, in some kind of compilation painting or, I don't know, like a drawing of some kind. Because it was cool to develop all those characters individually and then bring them together and see how they can mesh into one story um, and, and interact, you know, and not that they all interact with each other, but how they interact with the, you know, the main Daedric character. Something in the Way cover by Daedric Wynn. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I'm always, I always love doing covers because what's cool is when you dive into that stuff, uh, then, you know, you, you learn different techniques from those artists. Because I, what I like to do is before I do, you know, my, my TikTok covers the, and the real covers is when I'm listening to the song, like obviously I've listened to these songs before, you know, casually as just um, a fan, but it's cool whenever I'm, I'm ready to cover it, I like to pick the part that I'm going to do. And really listen to like all the inflections and the techniques that they're using to, um, you know, to uh, to perform the song. And I'm like, wow, like I never really dived in that deep before. So when I do it, I like to listen and and then obviously make it my own, but kind of take on some of that and and see how can I implement that in Daedric stuff because there's some you know cool little tricks that these vocalists do that I never really thought to do for myself. But I feel like every cover I do is something like a, of a learning process and um, I'm able to use that in the future. Let's see. <laughs> a lunchtime cover. Man, <clears throat> if I haven't been talking for uh, 35 minutes, I, I could sing something for you guys, but it'd be kind of awkward because it'd just be like me, a cappella. Like, never gonna give you up, never gonna break you up. <laughs> and then it would just be like really weird and kind of strange. Um. <laughs> I do a lot of covers and snippets on social media. Would a cover album be something for the future? You know, a lot of people ask me that. They want me to do full covers of the songs that I've been, you know, <laughs> that I've been covering. Um, and I am really open to it because I've done some covers before under my own name on, a, on uh, YouTube and I have them out there. And they were really fun because again, like I was learning as I was doing it and um, and I, I like, you know, these artists, and they always ins inspired me to, to do the things I'm doing now. And it's kind of, to me, it's kind of a tribute, but also it's kind of like my own flavor situation. So I'm, I don't know, I would be really down to, to do a full album, but I would want to be picky about what I do and, and how I do it. I want to make sure that it kind of resonates with the Daedric sound while also, you know, not totally being... <laughs> like blasphemy of the original because there's a, that happens sometimes where you're like why did you cover that like you know like machine gun kelly's cover of uh what was it was it disturb uh like like that like i just i don't want to bastardize anything because that's embarrassing and then people are like why the hell did you do that that's awful um since you like attack on titan would you do the rumbling cover uh i i have no comment on that i'm gonna stay quiet but I'm not gonna say no. Um, that that rumbling song is is awesome. It's honestly like their, it's their best you know intro song that they've had, and I know a lot of people have covered it, and everyone has their unique voices. So I would, wouldn't be opposed to to putting my you know flavor on that and seeing uh, if you guys would be down to to listen to that and and get that on Spotify. Um, I was gonna say. I mean, I'm. If you guys want to suggest covers for me to do, I'm always open to to trying new stuff. It doesn't always have to be metal or rock. Um, I've been, you know, thinking about 
maybe covering some pop ones just to mix it up because I know I do a lot of, of uh, screaming covers and stuff. Uh, what band or artist do you think is the hardest to cover? Um, I mean, okay, North Plains, the Carbonized cover I did was, was pretty tricky because he screams in a very fast pattern and I'm still, you know, I've been screaming for like a year or two now, but it's still like, you know, getting those patterns down and making them sound good while not rushing it or not like lagging is a little bit tricky. So that one was tricky. Um, Ginger's cover was surprising to me because if you try to sing that and then go to screaming, it's like really uh, technical. Like she, you know, she's screaming for most of Pisces or like the end, mostly that I'm talking about the outro here. She's screaming on that outro and then she goes into this crazy high belt. And I was like, when I was listening to it, I was like, oh, I got this, like, this will be easy. And then I went to record it and I was like, oh damn, like, this is hard. Like she go from screaming this, like almost, it sounds like a, a sea shanty pattern to this um, like operatic belting part. And I was like, there's this note that I was like, the, this long held out high note that I was like, oh, that's, that's hard. Um, so there's that. And then, you know, Lincoln Park, Lincoln Park's um, crawling was, was a little tricky um, just because, you know, Chester, he's an amazing vocalist and I didn't want to like totally fail on that one. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I could at least measure up a little bit to, to Chester's voice because, you know, he has that like OG metal course uh, tone with the grit singing and the, and then his cleans are, you know, they're just so beautiful and I wanted to make sure I did a good job on that. So that one took me a little bit to nail because I just, you know, his legacy is something that I think is worth um, honoring because, you know, I feel like he's kind of like this, the father of metalcore and, and a lot of what people do is based off the work that he's contributed. Um, so I don't know, that was, that was kind of important to me. Um, in terms of like covers that I'm thinking of doing that are hard, um, I guess like I'm always wanting to challenge myself. So um, I would love to do, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, death metal or something. <laughs> But I also want to do something like way out of the way, like Sia, um, one of her songs, um, or even something crazy like like a Justin Bieber cover, but with my own, you know, my own take of it, um, just to mix it up and, and bring those people into the loop. <laughs> Why am I just getting Rickrolled? <laughs> cover Arsefire. Oh, you know, um, I recently listened to a few of their songs and I thought that would be cool. So yeah, maybe Archbar would be a good one. And then uh, Doja Cat, man, I'm a huge fan. Like I think that lady is a sexy lady and she is super talented and I love her style. Like I know people give her flack for, for being nominated as a rap artist and then they're like, oh, she's not rap or whatever. But I don't know, that doesn't matter to me. I think um, what she's done for, you know, for R&B and that like, in her own, well, like, kind of, I guess you could call it hip hop. Um, I think she's brought a unique sound that I find really good to listen to. Like it's kind of this mix of, of chill and then, you know, turn like, just like you're able to dance to it. But if also, if you're just trying to vibe, like it's also equally good. Cover Bring Me the Horizon. I just did. I covered uh, Can You Feel My Heart. It's up on, it's on TikTok and it's on Instagram. Um, it was just, you know, there's that, that one verse and then the chorus, Black Sabbath. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. I know I've done, um, I, I've done Whitechapel, so I might as well do Black Sabbath, right? I would love to hear Back to Black by Amy. She's the best. Okay. Wait, is this Amy Winehouse? I'm not really familiar with that song, Back to Black. I'm just assuming it's Amy. It's either Amy Winehouse or Amy Lee. And I don't think, I don't think Evanescence had a Back to Black. <laughs> spirit box cover um i did circle with me early on um and i'm not opposed to doing another one one of my favorites by spirit box is actually rule of nines um that that song's really sick because like you know it's it's very like um like a seductive sounding song and then suddenly at the end she just like you know she goes for it and she just like you know screams her heart out and i don't know that song's really sick oh amy winehouse yeah okay you know amy winehouse is an interesting one too because Honestly, I heard about her through um, rock band when I was growing up. I had never really listened to a lot of music when I was a kid. And then someone introduced me to rock band and I was like, okay, well, I want to learn to sing for, for all these covers and stuff. And so 
I learned rehab <laughs> on rock band and um, I then I started looking into Amy Winehouse and I was like oh this this chick's pretty cool um, and you know she had her she had her own personal struggles and stuff but her music was just like so unique and her voice is still amazing um, and and I wouldn't be opposed to like trying that because she's she's very very different from what I'm doing and you know maybe integrating like her style with mine could make something cool um, but yeah um, trying to think what else. Um, bring me a life cover <laughs> I grew up singing that song every single day like literally every day I would sing that song and every karaoke session I went to I always sing bring me a life and it's like to the point where it's like <laughs> do I even need to cover it anymore because I was obsessed with Evanescence in high school I was all about that, you know, the, the goth emo aesthetic, the, the black hair, the the blue, uh, she always had blue color grading on everything, everything was blue all the time, um, and she was like super depressed, and I'm like, I would also like to be depressed and sad, um, but yeah, but no, Bring Me to Life is still a really sick song, maybe I'll do it, just to, you know, why not, I wonder if there's a good Elder Scrolls song, yeah, um, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm assuming that Elder Scrolls is like Skyrim and everything is as like a soundtrack or soundscape. So I don't know if they have like anything with, um, you know, with people singing on it, but it'd be cool if they did. Um, I would like to do more like anime, maybe an anime cover. I know like I had a few requests on Twitter about that. Um, but I, I didn't know that song in particular, but um, there's like, there's a couple of anime intros that I'm like, the, that's a banger, you know, maybe I'll cover that. I actually can't wait to show you guys what I'm working on because I feel like you'll really like it. Will I pick up Elder Scrolls 6? Um, probably. Probably because I really loved Skyrim. I was obsessed with Skyrim. Um, maybe cover something from Bear 2, but I do have Caleb that are catchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to, to trying new screams. What I love actually about... Um, what I love about um, all the you know harsh vocalists out there is that everyone has their own unique style like they have obviously they have their own timbres and their own like um, pitches and stuff but what's cool is like the way that they enunciate or like their patterns and stuff is all like super unique so what's cool is like every time I've covered like these harsh vocalists I'm listening to like how they how they're writing and and the the choices they made in the songs because um, that was something I struggled with in the beginning when I was first writing my own spring patterns was like how to make it fit within the, the beat and make it sound good and not compete with it but also be um, really cool and add something um, something new to the sound so I love uh, playing with those listening to those trying them out and being like I didn't know you could do that maybe you know the, the patterns are something that sometimes I like to implement into our stuff or even like be inspired by those patterns of like you know like maybe holding out on some parts and trying to almost like rap scream is the way I think of it. It's like you're just going as fast as you can on some things. Um, let's see. Any Cell Dweller songs you like or would like to cover? Ooh, um, I think it's End of an Empire is the one that's my favorite. I don't know if I would cover it just because, I mean, maybe I would. I guess I would cover it. Um, I'm more interested in like a collaboration to be honest, but I guess it, it couldn't hurt to cover it either because that one, I don't know, that song was really cool. I'm a huge synth fan. I love hearing that stuff. You know, one of my biggest influences was actually, um, um, like, not that it's synth, but like Hans Zimmer. I don't know. He has like, I know he writes like orchestral music mostly, but it kind of reminded me a lot of like synth music in the way that it flows seamlessly throughout the tracks. Um, and then it, it, it kind of, I guess that, that kind of got me interested in synth wave and stuff. And I don't know. I don't even know where I was going with that, to be honest. <laughs> um, Soul Extract and Daedric. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm always down to collaborate with anyone, anywhere, like any genre. Um, I think anytime you meet someone and you talk with them and talk through a project or you work on a project with them and you you kind of dive into it and as you write and you listen to the ideas that they created and you add your own, it creates a very unique blend between two established people. 
Um, it's just like any relationship. Any anyone you meet, you're gonna interact with them differently than anyone you've met before in your life um, be, because of the way that you blend. And so it's the same with music. I found that as I've collaborated with different people, it's changed my perspective um, for like as I go forward and, and write new things because I'll always take something away from it. Um, and even if they give me edits on something, it's like I like to see what they're thinking and the things that they like because you know everyone comes from their own unique backgrounds and um, they always have some cool perspective that I have never experienced and but then they get to, to teach me about so yeah always open to that I think soul extract is really cool I mean honestly everyone on the fixed label is really really cool they're all super talented because you know obviously they got signed um, and I don't know I mean I'm, I've collaborated with you know, with Kaixo already, and we actually have a new one coming out soon, I think this summer, and maybe you guys will, will dig that one too. <laughs> oh, everybody's waiting for me and, and uh, Clayton, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, whenever, whenever he has time, I would love to collaborate on a song. I love writing. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do because when I'm writing, um, and I, it's just me in the room in the studio. I love to just imagine the possibilities, and it's almost like a like a diary entry because it's I'm the only one that's hearing it in that moment, and it's cool because it's all mine. And then once I share it, it's like it's not mine anymore. It's like it belongs to everybody else. Yeah, Daedric and Zelda would be really really cool. My favorites of Daedric is everything. <laughs> have I covered a star set song? Uh, no, I have not. Um, I guess I could try. I mean, I don't know. I, I honestly haven't really listened to them a lot. So maybe I should educate myself before I just say that I would do it. But like I said, I, I want to try everything and anything because um, it's just, it's always going to be a unique experience every time. You guys have any other questions about um, Dawnbreaker or the song, uh, the music video? Let me know. I'll probably stay on for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, my mouth is tired from talking because I'm usually a listener, so I just feel like I'm talking to myself right now. I mean, I know you guys are there, but like <laughs> talking is something that is uh, usually happening in my head. <laughs> is it time for a mimosa break? Well, I have this one, but um, I'm not super uh, great with alcohol and I feel like you know, this conversation would devolve quite quickly and I don't want to uh, I don't want to do that because that's embarrassing but I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the song the video it took a lot to get here and I'm, I'm just really proud of it honestly I'm proud of everything that's come out of it you know from the from the cover art to the music video and the whole process of you know working with with Brian Skeel and you know working up to this release oh why the name dawnbreaker oh okay so um if you don't play um elder scrolls um this may not make a lot of sense but basically in in skyrim um there is a uh, a daedric prince called meridia and in the quest for for uh meridia um, she basically wants you to go eliminate some things and like kill some some like dead things so she hates like dead and evil things and so you go on this quest you finish that and then she gives you dawnbreaker and dawnbreaker is like this glowing sword that um is really good against um in the game there's like these zombies that are called like droggers so it's really good against those or anything pretty much anything dead um it's it makes it easier to kill them so dawnbreaker is the sword and it's this really epic looking sword um it's honestly probably probably the prettiest weapon in in Skyrim, because everything else is kind of like, um, like dark colored. I mean, okay, the the Daedric stuff is very cool because it's like uh, all black with like red glowing elements. Since it's from, it's from the um, the Daedric realm and stuff, and like you have to use uh, Daedric heart to create it and stuff. So it's like, it's like this really intense this thing. But um, Dawnbreaker, the sword um, is cool because it it kind of reminded me of um, of Sting from Lord of the Rings, you know how it glows whenever uh, Frodo is near orcs and stuff. It kind of, it was like this heroic weapon. It's all good and it, 
it basically is like like the hero kind of thing so that made Dawnbreaker unique for me uh, because a lot of the Daedric Prince stuff that in the in the quest lines that you work with they always have these like ulterior motives or like like you know like with Clavicus Clavicus Vala you have to do the the Mace of Mulag Ball and and like it's pretty dark sometimes so it's cool to do to the Dawnbreaker quest line because you kind of feel like oh I get to be like a little good and I don't have to like murder people <laughs> Thanks, James. Uh, if you guys don't know, James is our the co-president of, of Fix, and he's amazing to work with. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really glad to be part of this team. I know sometimes um, it can be a little bit challenging to, to work on a release like this because it becomes like a huge pro uh, task to, to create the content itself, to write the songs and all of that. But then there's the marketing end of it. There's um, pitching it to playlists and getting all the content ready for socials and stuff like that and and James and, and the team on Fixed has just been extremely supportive and they've helped us every step of the way and I, I honestly I appreciate them so much what kind of feedback would you like to receive from fan base um the feedback that I would love from you guys is you know like what do you want to hear from Daedric what kind of sounds are there you know certain things that you feel is missing or is there something that you love about Daedric that you're like never let this go you know always always include this in your music because to me and at the end of the day the music is the biggest thing and I just I want you guys to resonate with this music because it's it's always written you know from the heart and it's it, it it's something that is very very close to me personally but I also want to make sure that it it's something that touches other people because I love getting those messages from you guys where you're like I love this music um, it's something I've been looking for for a long time um, it resonates with me like that kind of stuff um, it, it really encourages me whenever I'm I'm struggling with something or I feel like I'm not good enough or I'm you know do, not doing enough or whatever it is I, I love knowing that the what I'm doing and all this hard work that I'm putting into it is worth it because someone else was impacted by that and that it made a difference for them, like a positive difference to where, you know, it's something that they've brought into their own personal lives and then maybe they share that with other people um, and it inspires them to work on their own stuff, whether it's music, art, um, you know, doing, you know, everyday stuff, like, I don't know, that that just makes me really happy. Uh, any merch? Yes, uh, I've mentioned this earlier, but if you go to the fixed store slash Daedric, we have a couple items up there for you guys. There's some new stuff that's going along with the, the Dawnbreaker release. Um, so you can order it directly from there and they will ship it to you, your house. Would you love to hear your music in video games? Oh yeah, I mean, hell yeah. I mean, any placement where someone decided that my songs were good enough to put in, you know, a game, a trailer, a movie, whatever it is, like, that's really sick. Like. It means that they they believed in it and they thought that someone else or multiple someone else's would enjoy it. And so, I mean, absolutely, I'd be very honored for any kind of placement, but absolutely gaming, because obviously I'm I'm super passionate about gaming. And I think it's it's just it's cool to be able to be a part of that. And so, yeah, like I would I would love to hear that. <clears throat> I know um, Sepulcher is in uh, if you guys do VR at all. Um, Sepulchre is on Smash Drums uh, with Oculus, so if you guys, if any of you have um, VR um, headsets or gaming systems and you download Smash Drums, we've actually gotten a lot of feedback on Sepulchre because apparently it's it's one of the hardest songs to play on there because the, the drum patterns on there are really complex and stuff. Um, so that was like the first video game placement I've ever been a part of, and, and it was just, I don't know, it was really cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, would I collaborate with other fixers? Yes. Um, um, if you weren't here earlier, I mentioned there were quite a few people on the roster, any, anyone on the fixed roster, but, you know, there were a couple in mind that I had that I just really, um, I look up to them, and I think those guys, those people are just, you know, they're doing some really cool stuff. So um, my top ones at, at the moment that I can think of are, like, the Annex, Cell Dweller, Fight the Fade. Um, obviously, I've already collabed with Kleixo, and then, you know, Void Chapter, like, those guys, those guys are just, they're just awesome, and I think they're also just really good people, and, um, I just, I, um, I would be honored to do any kind of collaboration of any sort. Uh, 
Oh yeah, Cell Dweller. Um, you know, I I don't think I had heard of Cell Dweller before I joined Fix, but it's cool knowing like how prevalent his work is. Like obviously he's you know he started Fix, um, Clayton did, and um, it's cool that he's built this whole you know empire with multiple artists and you know people that he surrounds himself with that have created this entire label and um, and influenced the sounds of everyone on here. Um, so I've learned quite a lot in in the the process of working on Daedric stuff, like how much people really love his work. And it's cool to see that, you know, they also enjoy Daedric too. Um, and I, obviously, absolutely, I would love to, to work on something with him because I feel like with the way that his sound works and the way that Daedric sound works, I feel like it would be pretty effortless to, to kind of um, mix those together and, and make something unique for us. But hey, uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, um, I'd like to thank you for, for watching Dawnbreaker, for joining the live chat and, um, you know, just letting me talk my ass off about all the things that we're doing with Daedric. I'm excited to keep going. I can't wait to just show you what we're working on. It kills me, honestly, to have all of this stuff in my backlog. It's just pending release. And I'm like, I just want it out now because I want everyone to hear it. I'm very proud of all of the things that we're working on all the things that we're doing and, and where we're going with it. And I just feel like it's going to keep developing and keep getting better. Um, but yeah, again, uh, thank you for, for joining. And um, if you have any more questions or anything, you can always uh, DM me on Instagram, uh, comment on there. Um, that's usually where I'm the most active. TikTok too, but uh, it gets a little drowned because you know, there's a lot of people that comment on TikTok. But Instagram is probably my main hub for Daedric. I love posting on there. I love that platform the most. Um, so yeah, if you have any more questions about Dawnbreaker, about Daedric, about um, anything we're doing, um, just hit me up on there. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.